Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. Now we have our next guest with us in the studio. This man is the founder of Head Start Africa, a group of 100,000 young people and like minds that are looking forward to creating impact in their society around the world. Now he's also the winner of the Future Awards Africa Prize for New Media in 2018. And he's a man set to change the world. Ladies and gentlemen, I have John Obidi, and today we're looking at personal development. What a way to start 2019. Thank you so much for joining us, John. Thank you for having me. Congratulations <laughs> on Future Awards. Thank you. You, you, you know, it was such a pleasure to sit down beside a winner. Mm -hmm. You know, you, no, was, you were a winner, it too. It was an honor. <laughs> you know? I was honored to see you win, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, John, we started the conversation earlier on looking yes. at books and reading habits. And I know you are an avid reader yourself. So was I right in stating that you're in the category of self-help and motivational books? Well, I wouldn't say motivation. I think that people mix up the words uh, motivation and personal development a lot. And especially even the practitioners, you say this guy's a motivational speaker. Maybe you don't know who to call what, but it's mostly personal development. So we're not just reading books to make ourselves feel good. We're reading books to learn real life skills because there's a lot of things that school did not teach us. You go through the academia, and there are people who graduated and found out, found out that they need people in life. They need to make friends. And like, okay, so how do I make friends? And so there's a book called How to Win Friends and Influence People. And then you read that book, and you start learning how to talk, how to be polite, and so on and so forth. So we like to call it self-help, or better still, personal development, not necessarily generally motivation. There's all a right. case for that, but it's not the generalization of all those So books. you read pe you read personal development yes. books. And you read a lot of personal development books in 2018. Yes. Do you have an idea of how many you read? No, I am definitely not around 138. <laughs> like, <laughs> 136. 36, yeah. I like to say 200, around figure of 200. That was phenomenal. No, she, not okay, me. Okay, okay. Yeah, I that's, thought you said you 200. That's, and you just that's said phenomenal. I'm nowhere near that number. Okay. Right. Let's just say I read a good number of books. A good number of books. I don't want to compete with that. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Okay, so now let's look at, you mentioned that there's so many skills that school did not teach us. Yes. There's skills that we need to learn along the way. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure there are many people that are looking and thinking, what areas of my life do I need to develop to get to the desired job, the desired career path that I want? So what would you say are some of the most important soft skills that we need to learn? Well, that's why I like the area of personal development because anything that you want to be, you can actually become that. That's why it's called personal development. You can develop yourself. You know, we say that a dog cannot be anything other than a dog, a goat, the same thing. So human beings were the only species that can change our circumstances by changing our thoughts and by acquiring the right information. There's no amount of information a dog can acquire to become a CEO, right? <laughs> but a human being, we can choose to elevate our minds, acquire the right knowledge and start getting the right results. So you look into your life, what are those areas of your life that you think require growth? There are books on just about every single thing. You don't have to figure these things out yourself. There are people who have walked that path before and they have journaled, they have documented their process and we can simply read them. If you have issues with communication, there's this um, ace communicator, Larry King, who wrote, who wrote a book on how to talk to anybody. I remember once in my life when I used to be a very shy person, I picked up that book, the, the audio version, and I went through it. It gave me a lot of tips, and I, and I practiced and practiced. And when I tell people today that I once used to be chronically shy, nobody believes me. Because, I find it hard to believe as well. Yeah, I, I know, you know because there's, there's a gulf in difference between who I used to be and who I am now and who I am still developing into. And we call it the, the can I, constant and never ending improvement, but no one's going to hand it to you. There are books all over the place. There's the internet, there are physical books, but you can get into the field of personal development and read up on any subject you're deficient in and become a pro. So it's left for everyone to decide what areas they want to develop yes, in indeed. themselves. Yes. Now, it's one thing to read a book, John. It's yes. another thing to retain the information that you've read. Now, it's not knowledge until it's applied. You can yes. read it and you understand. So how do you shift from just reading you know, to know, you reading to know and really putting it into application? So it, it depends on the situational context. I think a lot of people are afraid of reading books because there's this nervousness of not being able to remember everything you read in books. You know, we've been traumatized through the educational system when it comes to reading. And so there's this nervousness, you read this thing, if you don't cram 90% of the curriculum, you're going to fail your exams, you'll get an extra year, you'll repeat, you'll be a disgrace to your parents. There's a lot of that. And so we've left that system now. And when it comes to reading personal development books, people have that anxiety. There's a big book. Ah, can I remember all these things? And they dump it because of that anxiety. But you don't have to remember every single thing. And also, not everything in a book will apply to your specific journey. 
in our, enti in our entire book. It might be just one chapter that's for you. So just read, 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 read. If something stands out to you, underline it, think about it, meditate on it, write your notes on it. You don't have to read a thousand and one books. You can read one book ten times until the core things that, until the core lessons take away that apply to you stick and begin to bring out results in your life. All right, so when Toby and the idea of uh, Robin, Robin Heights was speaking, I asked her, what is the one thing that we should do away with, one negative reading habit that we should do away with in 2019? And she says procrastination. I don't know if you've dealt with procrastination personally, but that's one thing that lots of young people fight with, young and old actually fight with. What would you say are some of your tips for dealing with it, if you've dealt with it? Okay. I believe you have. Yes, I have, okay. and I'm still dealing with it in some areas. But there's a, a book, again, I picked up in this area. I think it's called The, the, the Five Second Rule by Mel Robbins. And so one of the key takeaways from that group, from that book, is that just count down from five and just do that thing. Procrastination is somehow sometimes we're afraid of consequences of failing at that thing or not knowing enough or not having enough information. But most of the time when we just start, somehow the resources just come up. So I read that book. Um, I didn't really finish it, but I read on YouTube. I watched her TED talk and I got the key points and I practiced. So if you want help on that, just go Google the five second rule on, on YouTube and you'll find some tips there. But another thing about procrastination is that um, some, one of the things that can develop us the most is environment. That's one of the most transformational factors even beyond books and environment. When you put yourself in an environment that demands a higher level of behavior from you, you are going to grow. If you're in a place where if you procrastinate, you're fired, you lose your job, trust me, that demon will leave. <laughs> because your paycheck <laughs> depends on that thing going. And so you're going to so put yourself in an environment that has a higher expectation on you. And that's a, a, a very easy way to do it. I'm going to go a little personal, John. Yeah. I'm wondering if you'd be kind enough to share with us in, in your journey to personal development. I know it's an ongoing, a never-ending journey. But have there been, I'm sure there have been several areas of your life that you figured, okay, you know, and this is not the shy area. Don't tell us about the shy area. <laughs> Something we don't know. An area okay. of your life that you figured you had a deficiency and you had to work on. Tell us about it and tell us how you dealt with it. Huh. Let me see. I think it would be in public speaking. When I first started public speaking, I noticed that my speech was really fast and a bit slurred. So it makes sense to me, but if I hear the recording, it's really mumbled, made no sense, you know, and so that was something I felt like I had to really um, study. And I didn't read a book for that. I got a coach, you know, online. I attended some physical workshops, immersive physical workshops, and they helped me out in my speaking ability. I knew that my, my speaking ability was going to be an indispensable tool in my career. So I focused my resources on getting better at that. There's, a, there's Dale Carnegie, they hold workshops on that. I went there, I attended, it was great, and I've been practicing over time. Beyond even that, in my, in my home, I use my phone. Everyone has smartphones these days. An easy way to practice is just record yourself on your camera. Play it back. How does it sound? Is it too fast? Is it too slow? I use using filler words like arms and arms. So I did that over a time until I could say it's a bit satisfactory. And, and, I'm and sure I you wouldn't like say it's satisfactory. <laughs> Actually, you, you do sound good. You Thank did, you. You did a good job. Yeah. Let's look at some of the, the key areas in which, or the key tools that one can use to help themselves. Now, beyond books, we know that the internet is an indispensable part of personal development. I'm sure there are sites, there are courses, you know, there are workshops. You mentioned attending workshops online. How do you advise people to go, go for these things? Because some people's excuses, I don't have money. You know, I, I can't travel abroad until I go abroad. I can't get proper training. But you, you can't get training from the comfort of your bedroom. True. You know, so how would you advise people whose excuse is money? Okay, so let's talk about time first. Because a lot of people are afraid of reading books because they feel like they don't have time to read, get all the information in there. So there are other alternatives. One hack that I found out and I put out on my Instagram um, recently is that most of these books, especially if they are best-selling authors, most of these authors have done TED Talks before. If they haven't done TED Talks, they've done a speaking engagement about that book to promote that book. And usually on those platforms, because the time limit is short, they are forced to condense their best ideas into 30 minutes or at most one hour. So if you don't have time to read a book, check it out on YouTube. The author has likely done a talk on that book. Or there are also on YouTube channels, too, that do book summaries. I like to recommend that to my email list a lot too. So go there, go through the book summaries, listen to the author's TED Talk, and you get the best ideas out of the book. There are also sites like Blinkist 
there's another one, um, I don't remember the other one, but Blinkist, they do book summaries. So they summarize a big book into like a 30 minute read or a one hour read at most, and you get the key points and move on to the next. So that's something that you can do. There are sites too, if you want to improve yourself, there is Udacity, there is Udemy, there is Skillshare, uh, there's another one that's free, I don't remember the name, but these sites can help you to develop some skills and you don't really have to spend money. When you do have money, of course, go attend events for the networking factor too, aside the knowledge, but the internet, man, it's the best thing man has come to being omniscience and all-knowing and omnipresent. I mean, go on there. There's no new knowledge that you're looking for that is not there. It's all on there on YouTube. The only thing Google. they don't have the correct answer to is when is Jesus coming? I'm sure there are speculations. Let's so Google it. <laughs> We will look at, you know, I like the fact that you're giving us, you're giving us sites and you're giving us recommendations, which you normally do with your page on Head Start Africa. So I, I recommend that, you know, people who want more information about that should check you out online. But before I let you go, there's one problem that a lot of us face, the problem of discipline, you know, self-control, being able to master your time, being able to master your body and not being overtly busy when you should, you know, know how to manage yourself. And many people are on this table. Many people are, I'm, I'm on this table as well. How would you say that you've come to learn how to master yourself, how to, you know, you know, the, is it Plato or Socrates that says man know thyself? How would you say you've come to this point where you know yourself and you've been able to master yourself and your time? Well, mastering yourself is one of the difficult things that you'll ever have to do. You know, the school of you is the hardest you'll ever have to pass through. And I could, I could give you tips, I could give you books, but none of them will beat accountability. And so, you know, we live in a very fragile time where people, you know, get really sensitive about being called out on their negative attributes. And when someone criticizes you constructively or not, you see that person and say, hey, Ty, you know, people are so, you know, you're afraid. And someone said, no, everyone wants to shine like a diamond, but nobody wants to get cut. But when you have an accountability system of people who love you and are committed to your growth just as you are, they can tell you, hey, I think you're slacking here. I think you're slacking there. Sometimes positive peer pressure is a good thing <laughs> because people are looking out and saying, hey, you know, you're always late. You should check that out. You know, you're always procrastinating. Check that out. You say you're going to launch a, a YouTube channel, you know, last year. You're still on it. <laughs> you know, accountability is that drug that can really speed up your goals. All right. So, yeah. John, what are, what are our expectations of are you? Are you catching a sob somewhere? <laughs> I'm just, you know... <laughs> I'm not catching any sub Okay, yet. that's cool. Um, so what are your plans for 2019? You know, with what you're doing, you're doing amazing work for young people. What, mm -hmm. are, what, are, what are we expecting from you in 2019 on a much lighter note? Well, same old, same old. Um, changing the world uh, one person at a time. Helping, pe helping people to live their best lives, discover themselves, and live their highest potential. This tool that we call social media that is also a blessing and a curse, you've mm -hmm. turned it into a blessing. Yes. How do we manage social media for our benefit? We found that in, we're hearing more reported incidences of depression. There's a lot more mental health awareness now, I dare say, but social media has been a major distraction and a major problem for people. How would you advise people who are still under the bondage of social media to get their freedom? Self-awareness is something everyone must learn, right? It's the number one thing you should know right after school or whatever, self-awareness is very important. There, there are certain pages you go to that make you feel less and you have no business being there. There's, there's, there's one thing that a lot of Nigerians don't understand. Every time you spend in the comment section of certain pages where people are being insultive, people are being abusive, you do not know but you are sowing seeds in your mind. The day that you want to do something worthwhile with your life, you're going to replay those comments back like a tape, and you will not get going. So I like to tell people, follow people who inspire you. Follow accounts that inspire you. We have them all over the place. Not everything is about entertainment. Not everything is about fun and jokes. You will joke and joke and joke. The day you want to make sense of your life, you will joke about your life too. Follow people who inspire you. Follow people who are doing things that you want to do. People give tips all the time. I don't want to mention all the names, but you know them. They're on social media. They give a lot of tips, business tips, personal development tips. 
unfollow those people. And it's okay to use the unfollow button as well. It's okay to use the, the unfollow button as well. Right. I myself, I, I used to follow these accounts, and it got me following someone who was doing great. And I said, wow, in Nigeria, is doing this. I want to do this too, and that could be you too. All right. We hope that with this few points of ours, we've been able to convince and not confuse you that social media is not the devil. So please make good use of social media to your benefit. Follow sites that would empower you. How can people find out more information? You know, we, what you do, you give out free information on personal development yes. via your page, Head Start Africa. How yes. can people follow that? So Head Start Africa is a Facebook group. All you have to do is get on Facebook and search Head Start Africa Community. It's a Facebook group. There are about 100,000 people there. Hit the join button. I'll be glad to have you. We hold trainings on personal development and business every day, every week, every month. And, and all this is free. Entirely because we free. have your best interest at heart, yes, we sir. want you to um, push yourself you know, and do all that you can. To enjoy more of this, our Ubunke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.